Marcus S. Caribbean News Desk. I'm Dennis Chabrol. First, the headlines. In Dominica, angry opposition supporters protest outside electoral office over the loss of one seat to the ruling Labour Party. Guyana's opposition wants the High Court to stop government from spending money on items that have been unapproved or unauthorized. And Jaden Barbuda to support Canada's resolution on Iran for the first time in several years. The United Nations has approved International Yoga Day. Trinidad and Tobago citrus growers to expand operations in Guyana. And Cuba will be attending the next summit of the Americas. Details coming up. We are one Caribbean. Angry protesters led by leader of the opposition, United Workers Party, or UWP, Lennox Linton, today picketing the office of the chief elections officer and the electoral commission in the capital city, Roseau, demanding an audience with him. At the heart of the problem is the disputed seat which the electoral officer decided to give win to the ruling Democratic Labour Party by eight votes. The UWP claims massive irregularities in the vote counting and accused the presiding and returning officers of fraud and illegal behavior. With riot police standing at the ready, the protesters, some bearing placards and chanting, We want justice, called for fresh elections. In the end, no one came out of the electoral office to meet with the UWP officials. UWP leader Lennox Linton said, It is not yet over and he vows to continue the action until they get a clean electoral list, voting identification, and electoral reform. This is not over, not by a long way. Now. Not by a long way, this is not over. The people of Dominica want free and fair elections. The people of Dominica want electoral reform. And the people of Dominica will get electoral reform, whether Roosevelt Skerritt likes it or not. Whether the police want to protect him in his decision not to give electoral reform or not. The power in people is greater than the people in power. We need tonight in Lago. Thank you. God bless you. So too is Dr. Thompson Fontaine, who will be going to court to seek redress in the disputed Grand Fawn seat. Skerritt is interested in keeping himself in power at all costs. But we, the people of Dominica, we are more in number, we are greater in number, and the moral force of the universe is behind us. And so we will stand on the ground. And finally, remember people, we will win because our cause is just, as Martin Luther King said. Thank you. Guyana's opposition leader David Granger has moved to the High Court to stop what he regards as the unauthorized spending of monies from the Treasury on projects and programs that have not been approved by the House. Granger is a partnership for national unity and the Alliance for Change, or AFC, that together controlled the National Assembly, had voted down the Guyana equivalent of $174 million U.S. million in projects and programs in this year's budget. However, the ruling People's Progressive Party Civic, or PPPC, administration went ahead and spent more than $21 million U.S. million on many of those projects and programs that have not been approved and it then took a statement of excesses to the House for a passage. That statement of excesses has not been passed because it did not come up for a debate. The House did not meet, and now Parliament has been suspended and would early next year be dissolved to make way for early general elections. It is widely believed that government continues to spend monies on those unapproved areas without any parliamentary oversight. In court documents seen by Caribbean News Desk, Opposition leader David Granger says that government ministers cannot spend monies that have not been approved or authorized by the National Assembly because it will be unconstitutional and it is against the separation of powers between the executive and the legislature, contending that his case raises fundamental issues of governance in a democratic state. Mr. Granger wants the High Court to grant a conservatory order to halt all spending on 
or any further spending on those programs that have been disapproved or unauthorized by the National Assembly until a hearing determination of the main case. The opposition leader's move to the High Court comes against the background of claims that government is using money from the Treasury to campaign for the next elections. Antigua and Barbuda is supporting Canada to condemn human rights concerns in Iran. This marks a change of the six-year-old stance of abstaining on the issue at the United Nations. Foreign Affairs Minister Charles Max Fernandez says that's one of the decisions Cabinet approved late Thursday. For example, they had uh, some like 800 executions the past year, a lot of them without trial and so on. There is uh, this human rights concern and uh, the Canadian uh, government has asked for us to vote with them on that issue. Prior to this, the um, government of Antigua would abstain. I'm happy to say that our cabinet, I think, did the right thing in voting unanimously for us to vote with Canada to um, um, speak out against the um, human rights violations that are being uh, witnessed in Iran today. Antigua's Foreign Affairs Minister Charles Max Fernandez. The country's six-month-old administration has been reversing several decisions of the former United Progressive Party administration. Canada is said to have taken one of the toughest stances of any country against Iran by closing its embassy in Tehran and kicking its diplomats out of Canada in 2012. Much of Canada's criticism flows from the 2003 torture and murder of Canadian photojournalist Zara Kazmi in a Tehran prison. She was thrown in jail where she was tortured and raped before dying in hospital weeks later. Trinidad and Tobago food growers are planning to open a factory in Guyana to produce pulp and juices. The Twin Island Nation's Minister of Food Production, Devont Maharaj, however, says much will depend on the Trinidad and Tobago Citrus Growers Association increasing production. Only this morning, I met with the chairman and director of the Trinidad Citrus Growers, and they were sharing with me their, their plans to expand their activities further in Guyana to um, introduce a pulping and juicing facility and um, I have with me a member of the board of the Agricultural Development Bank and over that breakfast meeting they were talking about additional funding to establish such a juicing plant here but they need to get their production up to a thousand acres in order for it to be economically viable. Currently, the citrus growers are planting 200 of the 1,000 acres of land that have been leased to them by the Guyana government. Mr. Hamaraj could not say what plants the citrus growers have to access cheap electricity for the proposed juice and pulp plant. Currently, Trinidad and Tobago imports more than 90% of its fruit pulp and juices from Belize and Costa Rica. The food production minister over the last two days led a team of prospective investors to Guyana on a scoping mission to explore other mega farm opportunities modeled after the citrus growing project. The oil-rich Caribbean country hopes that the establishment of mega farms will help reduce its huge food import bill. Yoga has been recognized by the UN General Assembly, which on Thursday declared a day for it. More in this report from the United Nations Radio's Stephanie Kutrix. Starting next year, the International Day of Yoga will be observed on the 21st of June each year following a resolution unanimously adopted by the Assembly. The President of the General Assembly welcomed the unanimous adoption in a statement delivered by Ambassador Alvaro Mendoza e Mora of Portugal. Today's adoption of a resolution on the International Day of Yoga with overwhelming support as shown by the more than 170 member states that that have co-sponsored it demonstrates how both the tangible and the unseen benefits of yoga appeal to people around the world. For centuries, people from all walks of life have practiced yoga, recognizing its unique embodiment of unity between mind and body. The President of the General Assembly congratulated Indian Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, who proposed the day when he addressed the Assembly in September. Prime Minister Modi said that yoga had therapeutic powers that could change people's lifestyle and help tackle global problems. Stephanie Kutrix, United Nations. 
Cuba has confirmed its participation in the Summit of the Americas to be held in Panama on April 10 to 11, 2015. Cuba is one of at least seven countries that have, in conversations, verbally confirmed their participation in the Hemispheric Meeting, along with Chile, Colombia, Mexico, Costa Rica, El Salvador, and Honduras. That's according to a source at the Panamanian Foreign Ministry. The Panamanian government announced on December 4 that it had invited Cuba to the summit, and the next day the United States said that a summit of the Americas could have credibility even with the presence of Cuba. Participating in summits of the Americas are member countries of the Organization of American States, or OAS, to which Cuba once belonged, but was suspended for decades. Though the suspension was raised in 2009, the island has not formally asked for its membership to be restored. Panamanian President Juan Carlos Barrella said his government has sent invitations to the 34 OAS nations and that he hopes that all their presidents will attend. The central theme of the 7th Summit of the Americas is Prosperity with Equity, the challenge of cooperation in the Americas, and the meeting will revolve around the subjects of health care, education, the environment, energy, security, migration, democratic governance, and a citizen's participation. Four forums will be held within the framework of the summit that will bring together civil society, young people, entrepreneurs, and directors of the best universities of the hemisphere. Regional airline Inter-Caribbean Airways this weekend begins new non-stop services linking Jamaica and the Dominican Republic with Haiti. Inter-Caribbean says that scheduled services will begin on December 13 between Kingston's Norman Manley International Airport and Port-au-Prince and between the Haitian capital and Santo Domingo International Airport. Direct one-hour flights will be offered twice a week. The new service fits in with the Haitian Tourism Ministry's initiative to increase flights in Bill Haiti as a leisure destination. That's according to the airline. Inter-Caribbean Airways is based in the Turks and Caicos and has been operating for 23 years. Hyatt Hotels Corporation announced the opening of the Hyatt Ziva Rose Rose Hall in Montego Bay to be followed on December 20 by the opening of the Hyatt Zalara Rose Hall in the same area. Hyatt's Senior Vice President of All-Inclusive Operations, Carlos Cabrera, says the hotel chain is delighted to celebrate the opening of Hyatt Ziva Rose Hall and the soon Hyatt Zalara Rose Hall in such a vibrant destination and community. Hyatt Ziva Rose Hall, located on the former site of the Ritz-Carlton, opened this week and has 496 suites, including 28 newly created premium swim-up suit suites, featuring terraces, gardens, and ocean views. Chief Executive Officer of Playa Resource Management Alex Stadlin says the guest experience will, be, will begin upon arrival at Montego Bay's Sangst International Airport with access to a private VIP lounge where guests are greeted and is then escorted to the resort via complimentary airport transfer services. The Hyatt Zalara Rose Hall is a resort exclusively for adults with 125 suites, including 30 romantic swim-up suites. And that's it for this edition of Caribbean News Desk. Thanks for joining us. You can visit us at our website at carabnewsdesk.com or Facebook at facebook.com forward slash carabnewsdesk. Don't forget you can also follow us at twitter.com forward slash them waves. Have a great weekend and then a Shabrol.